Centuries offer a wide-ranging arsenal of lethal methods to dispatch automatons and terminids with ease. There is something incredibly satisfying about setting a sentry down and watch it shell enemy positions. Hearing the mechanical loading mechanism, followed up with the clunking sound of a mortar shell being lobbed, which is momentarily followed up by the sound of shells bombarding enemy positions, thumping into the ground, or watch a horde of enemies helplessly try to advance on your position, only to be turned into mincemeat as they try to push through the choke point you cleverly positioned your Gatling sentry above. Like with other stratagems, there is a sentry for every situation in the game, but it's important to understand the subtle nuances for you and your squad to get the most out of them. With that being said, here are some tips and tricks which will help you perhaps choose which sentries are right for you, and if you're struggling for time, hopefully make an informed decision on where to spend your hard-earned in-game currency first. First up, the mortar, and in my opinion, one of, if not the best of the bunch. This sentry absolutely decimates hordes of enemies. Once it is set down, it throws barrages of three mortar shots in an arcing straight line on enemy positions. It makes incredibly quick work of enemies in a variety of situations, whether it's waves of automatons and their fortified bases, or hordes of terminids and their nest areas. This thing mutilates smaller, less armoured targets. It causes respectable splash damage and can grab you seriously high kill counts with ease. Now, with all that being said, I'm going to stop singing this sentry's praises and highlight that this all comes with a very large caveat. Your team must play around this sentry choice if you are to be successful. And this is where you might run into problems if you're in a random group of players. Players need to be willing to adapt to a certain play style for this to work effectively, or you will quickly find yourself running out of reinforcement callings. This is because this turret does not have the intelligence players have when firing at enemies. Well, most of them anyway. This sentry will fire at any enemy, including the ones that are surrounding teammates. It's very easy to find yourself being mortared if you don't keep enemies away from you when this turret is active. To use this effectively, the party should play close to the turret, or if they are confident enough in a way that absolutely guarantees that mobs are not going to get anywhere near them. Don't go running into nests or bases to throw grenades in when this thing's active, because it is highly likely you will get shelled. It might be an idea to take an auto cannon, grenade launcher, or ample strike capabilities to deal with nest holes and structures, or make sure that you know that the mortar is on downtime before you go committing to anything like that. One big downside is that it will aggro mobs when they are in range, so that means it will aggro patrols, which is rather a pain in higher difficulties when you're trying to sneak past. With that aside, this is an exceptionally strong sentry choice and is a perfect supportive tool for any squad if they are prepared to play around its requirements. Don't sleep on this one, folks. Speaking of requirements, what I've mentioned here is actually true of playing with sentries in general. Whether you are a person using them or you're a member of a party with them in, it's important to be aware of a number of things. So here are some more general pointers. As always, I've loved hearing your thoughts and opinions. So sound off in the comment below if you think I've missed anything. Let's keep learning and sharing that information, folks. Most of the sentries perform best being placed in elevated areas. This is for a number of reasons. Firstly, having better overview of the battlefield means that they will have better chances of picking off enemies, but, and perhaps most importantly, there is a smaller chance of team kill if the turret is shooting over your party's heads rather than through them. They are also better protected from taking damage from enemies, at least melee range ones when they are in unreachable spots, and it can be very frustrating when your squad have just deployed one and it goes kaput really quickly. It will be highly beneficial, therefore, to grab the first few ship modules to enhance the overall efficiency and health of the turret. Grab the module that gives the sentries 50% more ammo, as this will obviously result in a higher net kill count, and also make sure that you grab the one that increases the turret health to help it survive. This does not make it invincible, so make sure you and your party are protecting the turrets as well. Of course, the increased turning speed module is also a must-buy eventually, as this means your turrets will pick up targets much quicker. This is especially important for the auto cannon as this thing turns like a slug at the best of times. Make sure you call out to your team when you're using a sentry as this will also adapt the way they are playing. If you've called in an auto cannon in a pinch, it's definitely not good for anyone to stand directly in its potential lines of fire to be aware of that, folks. In my squad's experience, it seems that carrying two sentries on one person is the way forward. This is because you should think of it as a pairing. For example, take the mortar for horde clear and the auto cannon for dealing with tougher armoured enemies. That means that this setup's going to suit all situations, folks. Think about how different pairings could not only complement each other, but also your overall party composition. There's no point going LMG and Gatling Sentry if your squad are already using nade launchers, machine guns, and loads of other hall clear eagles. You'll be way over-equipped for it. So you'd be much better off in that situation, maybe taking something like more
water auto cannon here and that will allow you to have a little bit more range do not place sentries near enemy lines they will quickly get overrun or blown up by teammate strikes the tesla coil is a little bit of an exception here but we'll talk about that in a moment folks think about them being you as a player with a range weapon you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're easily overrun you want to be in a position where there's ample distance between you and your enemy to deal with them comfortably don't just mindlessly throw turrets down when you're engaging look at the horde composition where are they coming from what's in that horde composition which ones would suit it best do you need to put both down or maybe just one maybe it's a rocket turret to deal with some charges an auto cannon or maybe it's a gatling gun because there's lots of smallies this is also true of choices made when you're looking at the mission types kill the swarm missions suit gatlings and teslas whilst egg missions work well with a mortar and a gatling file titans switch to an auto cannon here automaton structure missions think again accordingly what things are going to cause the most explosive damage keep being a helpful team player what would really help me would be if you could smash that subscribe button to support the channel it really helps me out i'm loving the positivity and the encouragement in the comments and i'm so glad these videos are helping you make decisions and make the most of your time with the game thank you the machine gun sentry is the entry level one that you will likely pick first i wouldn't say it's a first choice other than when you first get it and it's a great way to start getting your head around the mechanics of how they work it's good at hall clear and killing non-armored targets but other than that it's fairly limited here if you were running a full sentry setup then it could work well to cover your auto cannon or rocket turret and help thin the ranks in that regard giving the heavier turrets the opportunity to just focus on the targets that need a little more heavy lifting in terms of the shortcomings i'll cover that once i've covered the gatling sentry this one on the other hand is absolutely s tier at hall clearing this isn't to say that the machine gun turret is useless i'm not saying that at all you can definitely still use it in your lineups if you like it it's very very good if you want to totally focus on horde clear i also think that actually one of the striking positives of this versus the gatling turret which we're going to go over in a moment is it doesn't blitz through its ammo as quick so it's a more sustained damage output over a longer period of time for those longer fights you find with the gatling turret it's pretty much sped before you've even looked back at it so that's something to consider here folks in terms of the gatling turret it. Now, this thing is an absolute S tier beast when it comes to hall clearing. Its rate of fire is insane and it makes mince meat of all non armored targets at a much faster rate than its smaller cousin. I've just said it eats through ammo and can be a little bit wasteful in that regard, so definitely beeline for that increased ammo ship module as soon as possible here. Both of these turrets perform their best when they are placed in elevated positions and strategically around choke points. These will absolutely shred your teammates and they really won't have much that they can do about it call them out and if you're playing with a turret user make sure you keep your eyes and ears out for the sound cues of these being deployed another nice thing to do with these turrets is put them against the wall it closes off the angle in which they can see so you can be rest assured that they are not going to be turning around and firing backwards at you it limits what they can see and forces them to fire in a 180 direction this is very helpful folks do you have any thoughts on these two sentries sound off in the comments below the auto cannon what a bloody dream it works exactly exactly like the weapon reversion apart from the fact it automatically reloads which is very much appreciated it's excellent at taking out armor targets think bio titans chargers armored trash mobs stalkers this thing though really sings against automatons it's a very powerful choice and in my opinion welcome in any squad setup this does come with the caveat that it is pretty stupid it does not focus the right targets often so do factor that in you can combat this by requesting that your squad focus trash mobs around larger targets so it has less choice but don't always rely on it to do what you're hoping and a human touch is always more reliable here just because you've got an auto cannon turret doesn't mean therefore that someone shouldn't perhaps opt to take the auto cannon in their hand it's slow turning speed is an absolute nightmare and a definite negative and even with the final upgrade that makes turn speed faster it is still painful this is another thing to factor in here the rocket sentry this is a bit of a universal choice it can take care of armored enemies and trash mobs effectively due to its splash damage which is an excellent benefit it shoots in volleys of two rockets at a time i believe and does some serious work because of this and will ratchet up the kills it does have a back blast and will knock you back and can easily one shot multiple teammates if they get in its way don't take it personally that's just how it rolls i would choose either an auto cannon or a rocket sentry unless you're going to heavily focus on heavier enemies but i don't know if that's an efficient step forwards unless you're going with a three sentry setup so make your choice between them folks what do you want more it deals with armored targets including bile titans so that's definitely something to consider it's also awesome when it picks a target that is clustered around a load of other mobs because
because the splash damage is very effective. The EMS mortar is an excellent supportive tool, much like its cousin, the Orbital EMS. This offers superb CC AoE potential. It can lock down single large targets, making them sitting ducks for heavy weaponry, and it also brings hordes to a grinding halt. Incredibly effective again for controlling the battlefield and clearing things out. This works really well synergistically with fire-based outputs like napalm strikes, incendiary grenades, incendiary shotguns, flamethrower. I would say the advantage of this mortar over the orbital version is that it shoots multiple times over a larger distance and over a larger stretch of time and can hit targets in a 360 degree radius. This makes it fantastic for longer engagements or locking down an area like a nest before you even start to approach. Its area of effect is smaller than the strike, but it's still incredibly useful and your squad mates will absolutely thank you for bringing it along. Again though, warn your teammates when you drop this, it behaves the same way as the mortar and as a result has the same issues. You can end up webbing your teammates up in dangerous situations and subsequently have them being swarmed. Nice little tip for when you find yourself in that position or indeed CC'd in any other situation, use the dive folks. This keeps you moving freely much quicker. I think there's an argument to bring both EMS Orbital and this mortar in your squad and use them in tandem to really lock down the battlefield. The Tesla coil is something that I have the least experience with, so maybe you can help here, folks. Do you have anything to add about what I'm about to say here or any of the other sentry call-ins, for that matter of fact? Sound off in the comments below. Tesla has good potential to cover choke points and really shines here. It works really well against bug breaches and really well in nests and swarm missions, but unfortunately, it does come with some pretty big caveats. The first being that it is very temperamental. Electricity arcs between enemies and players, so you can quickly delete your own party members without a second glance. It'll also delete team players who get too close to it. You, you literally can't go within a certain area because it will lash you with electricity and you will meet your demise very, very quickly. Due to its up-close nature, it needs to be dropped close to enemy lines. Again, makes it pretty difficult to avoid hitting when you're using strikes and call-ins alike. If you're looking for some advanced tips that focus on eagle stratagems, then check out this next video. It's got you covered. Take care of yourselves, keep having fun, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you.